In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to dynamically create HTML elements using JavaScript. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and welcome to JavaScript Snippets, a series of tutorials where we go through some of the most common tasks that a junior developer will need to do using JavaScript. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below so that you don't miss out on any of these essential training tutorials. So we're going to look in this tutorial how to create some new HTML elements on a page and actually add them into that page as well. And you might want to do this for a few different reasons. With just HTML and CSS, for example, we have a static page, which might look fine. But if you want to load in some data or react to some users' events, we might want to change the layout of the page by adding some new elements in. For example, if we're getting some data from somewhere and we want to display it, we'll need to create some new HTML to actually display it on the page. Or if the user's clicking a button, and maybe we want to do something like adding some new rows to a table. We'll look at some more concrete examples in a little bit, but let's first of all create our first HTML element using JavaScript. So we'll be doing this tutorial through the browser because we'll enter everything into the console and you can see things updating immediately on the page as we do it. So to create our first element, we first of all go over to the console and we need to run a function called create element to actually create our first element. And that function actually exists on the document object. So as you can see, the create element function only really needs the one argument passed to it, which is the name of the element that we want to create. And you pass that in as a string. So if we wanted to create a new div, we'd just pass in the string of div. And I'm going to save this reference to this element that we create in a variable so that we can do a couple of other things to it, including adding it to the page that we're on. So if we go ahead and run that, and if we inspect the lm variable that I've just created, you'll see it looks exactly like a div tag that you would type in if you were writing this into your HTML page. So we've created the element now, but if you go back over to the inspector and see the structure of the page, you'll see that that div doesn't exist anywhere in our body. So we need to run another function to actually add this onto the body, which we'll do in one second, but let's actually add some text inside our div so that we can actually see something on the page when we add the element in. So to do that, we're actually going to create another variable and we'll call that lm text. And there's another function to create text elements that, that display on your page. And unsurprisingly, it's called create text. And in this instance, we're going to say node. And this literally can be any string that you want to put inside your div element here. So if we save that and we'll inspect lm text, you can see it's literally just a string that we typed into the function. So now we need a way that we can add that lm text to our lm, which is our div element. And we call a function on the lm reference variable, which is append child. And into this, we just pass our text node that we created. So we say lm text in here. And when we hit enter and inspect the lm variable again, you can see our div element that we created now has our text that we created inside it. So we still can't see that div on the page. So we need one final function call to actually add it into our document. So I'm just going to access the actual body tag of our document here because there's nothing else in it and we can just add it straight to it. And we can actually call append child directly onto the body tag itself. But this time, instead of lm text, we're going to add the whole element, which is our div element that we created, straight to the body. So visually, we can see that appearing in our page now. And if we inspect our actual document object, you can see that... Whereas previously the body tag was completely empty, now it contains the div element that we created. And the cool thing about doing it this way is these variables that we've created, such as lm, lm text, are actually references to the items that have been added into the page, so we can actually change them whenever we like. So if I, for example, was to say lm text, and we can actually access its node value, which is the text that we added to it, and say something like, this is a new div you can see the text on the page is updated automatically. So let's just clear our console here a minute. And there are a few things that we can do with our div element that we created. For example, we can access its class list. So if we wanted to add a new class to it, so we could say something like heading. You can see when we inspect the element that this div now actually has a class of heading that we just gave it. We can also do the same thing with an ID as well. So we can actually assign an ID to the element. And when we inspect the element again, you can see it's still got our class and it's now got an ID of new div as well. And one final thing that we can do 
is we can actually set attributes for the element as well. And we can do that by saying lem.set attribute. And you can see it needs a name and a value for the attribute. Uh, so we could say something like option and then say test, for example. And if we inspect it one more time, you can see our div element now has a class, an ID, and also a custom attribute that we've added to it. So let's take a look at a concrete example of when you might use this. So let's say you were loading in some data and you were displaying some user information, for example, and you wanted to display their profile image. So let's create a new image tag to display our image on our page. So first of all, we'll go back to the console and I'll just clear the console for us now. I'm going to create a new element called profile image and that will be the result of a new document.create element function call and this time I'm going to pass in img which is obviously the image tag that we want to create and because profile image is actually an image tag you'll see I've got access to the source attribute of it directly here so I'm actually just going to set the source attribute to the placeholder of a, a kitten but in real terms this would be an image that you either got access to locally or something that was part of the user service where you got this information so now all we need to really do is add this into our document and again I'll add it into the body although this could be some other element that you're appending the profile image variable to. So there we have our image inserted maybe we want to actually change the size of that little bit because it's coming out quite big so we can actually access the style property of the image from here and let's just set the width equal to uh, say 50 pixels and we could keep adjusting that if we wanted to or set up some CSS rules so that it displays as we want it to. Okay, so for a final example, we'll look at creating something which is quite relevant, which is an input form. So you can imagine if a user is filling out a form and they want to add more fields, or there's something that gets added to the page if they select a certain option, this is something that you might want to dynamically add in. So we'll clear the console again, and we'll create a new input element. And you'll know from creating HTML forms that an input tag has a type that you assign it. So it can either be text or password or checkbox or something like that. So let's actually create a new checkbox here uh, by actually accessing that type value here. So we'll say uh, checkbox, for example. And I'll also create a label for that as well. So I'll say label lm. And also some label text. So what I want to do now with my label element is actually put the label text inside it and I'll also put the input element inside it which is a way that you can construct forms so that the label when you click it actually activates the checkbox as well. So let's do that now. So if we examine our label element and have a look at that you'll see it's actually created a label and inside that it says click me and there's also a checkbox input as well. So let's go ahead and add that to our document as well. Uh, whoops, I forgot to put the append child on there as well. So let's try that again. So you can see we've now we've got our label and our checkbox and if I click on the label click me or either on the checkbox itself as well that is turning on and off. And of course, if we wanted to control that via JavaScript, we could then just access the input element and it has a checked property. And we could either set that to blanks for when it's not checked, or we could then say checked if we wanted to activate it too. So there you have it, creating elements on a page dynamically using JavaScript. There are a couple of other ways that you can add stuff into a page dynamically using JavaScript but this approach gives you the maximum flexibility because you get all those references to the elements that you create and then you can control them afterwards. Like checking and unchecking the checkbox from the console here is a prime example. And hopefully what you've seen through the examples that we've looked at is that it's actually not that difficult and if you wrap all this up in a function you could call this quite easily, making a pretty interactive and dynamic page for you. So that's it for this tutorial, don't forget to take a second to subscribe to support the channel and see you next time.